Uh, Mr. Johnson, on behalf of the Commonwealth, your first witness when you are ready. Boyle County Sheriff's Deputy Keith Addison. Deputy Addison, if you'll take the witness stand, please. And, sir, once you've been seated, if you will face me and raise your right hand. <coughs> Sir, do you solemnly swear and or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth? Yes, sir. If you'll state your name and occupation, please. Keith Addison, Deputy Sheriff, Bull County Sheriff's Office. Yes, sir. Mr. Johnson, he has been sworn. You may ask. Mr. Deputy Addison, with whom are you employed again? Bull County Sheriff's Office. About how long have you been in that <coughs> employment? About two years. And before that, where were you employed? Gary County Sheriff's Office. Okay. And then, um, and before Gary County, uh, Harrodsburg Police Off, uh, Harrodsburg Police Department, and then Danville Police Department. Prior to that. Okay. And how long has your career in law enforcement been? Sixteen years. Now, what are some of your duties as a law enforcement officer? Everything from patrolling to answering calls to narcotics. Now, did you have to go through any sort of training as a law enforcement officer? Yes, I went through the uh, Department of Criminal Justice training in Richmond for 22 weeks. And as part of that training, um, well, can you just go into detail what that training entails? It entails patrol driving, handcuffing suspects, uh, DUI detection, drug detection, how to handle a a domestic situation, uh, some of the, we go over Kentucky laws, um, numerous things, anything to do with criminal, criminal activity. And so you indicated DUI detection. Um, do you know how many hours or days was spent doing? That's a 40 hour course. It's a week course. Okay. And what specifically does DUI detection, what's involved with that sort of training? How to detect an impaired driver and basically what that is is how to uh, administer field sobriety tests, what clues to look for during those tests, and also how to administer the intoxilizer test, the breath test. Okay, so um, you mentioned field sobriety tests, is that correct? That's correct. Um, what are there any specific field sobriety tests that you normally administer for DUIs? Yes, uh, horizontal gaze nystagmus, one leg stand, and walk and turn. Yes, those three things. I'm sorry. In part of DUI detection, what is what are what are some of the first steps of DUI detection that uh, you learned in your training? The very first step is um, obviously the driving of the suspect your initial contact with the suspect, and then from there you make the determination whether or not field sobriety tests need to be administered, and then you administer those field sobriety tests. Um, after those tests, you, you determine whether or not to arrest the subject and offer a breath of blood test to the suspect. Okay. And now getting back to the field sobriety tests, um, what, what was the first one you mentioned? Horizontal gaze nystagmus test. Okay, so what, what does that entail? It is a test of your eyes. It's an in, uh, horizontal nystagmus is an involuntary jerking of the eyes. What it's causes that nystagmus? Uh, alcohol can cause nystagmus. Okay, and so I'm sorry to interrupt. Continue. Um, based on my training, they teach us to do to look at the pupil size to make sure the pupils are same potentially the same size. Uh, if they're, I'm sorry, if they're not the same size, what is that indicative of? That could be a medical issue. Okay. And, I'm sorry, continue. Um, you check the pupil size. You check the uh, equal tracking of both eyes to make sure that as you're moving your finger across that both eyes are going the same. Uh, again, if they don't do that, they could potentially have a medical issue. Um, you also look to observe for resting nystagmus, which is where if you're not doing anything, the eyes are involuntarily jerking before you start the test. Uh, that, again, could possibly be a, be a medical issue. Uh, after
after you determine that, you continue with the test. Uh, you then check for smooth pursuit of the eyes, which is a little, which is similar to equal tracking, but on smooth pursuit, smooth pursuit, you watch the eyes, and if the eyes go smoothly across, obviously they're both going across at the same time, but if they're going smoothly across, that's um, an indication of no alcohol. If the eyes jerk as they move across, that's an indication of alcohol. That's a clue, what we were taught is a clue for alcohol. After that point, you could do uh, maximum deviation, which is where you take the eye out as far as possible, where there's no I'm light. I'm sorry, real quick, just briefly, Deputy, I'm sorry. When you're doing this, what exactly are you doing when you're... This is the test. You hold your finger approximately uh, 12 to 15 inches from the suspect, uh, slightly above their eyes, just to get them to open their eyes open. Uh, you move at a approximately two-second pace across so it should take you approximately four seconds to go all the way across. Um, you do that at equal speed and what you're doing is you're watching their eyes as they follow your finger and that way you can see the involuntary jerking of the eyes. Uh, again, as I said, once you get to maximum deviation, which is as far out as they can look with no white in the corner of their eye, if there is a bouncing of the eyes, it's an involuntary jerking, That was that's a, also a clue for alcohol intoxication. Uh, after you perform that test, then you move slowly across approximately four seconds to get to approximately a 45 degree angle to the eyes. There you can still see some of the white of the eye. Um, if you get to that level prior to 45 and you see an involuntary jerking of the eye, that is also a clue for alcohol impairment. So how many you, you keep saying the word clue. Approximately, how many clues are there when you're performing this test? There are six clues to the horizontal gaze nystagmus test. And for each eye. Lack okay. of smooth pursuit, nystagmus at max deviation, and onset prior to 45 degrees for each eye. So it's a clue for each, uh, three clues per eye. And how many clues in your training does it take to indicate that there's possible alcohol intoxication? Intoxication? Yes, sir. Anywhere from four to six. Okay. Now, how many stops have you performed for suspicion of a DUI? Hundreds. And uh, how many of those resulted in arrests? Hundreds. I, I can't give you an exact number. <laughs> so. Um, so you have a vast experience of doing DUI arrest and detection. And I've, I've been doing it for a while. Okay. Now, were you on duty on January 7th, 2017? Yes, sir. Uh, around maybe 10 o'clock that night? Uh, yes. Okay. I think it's closer to 11, but yes. Okay. Um, were you, now, did you observe anything out of the ordinary around that time? Uh, yes, I was traveling east. I was just patrolling. I can't remember if I had left a call or had conducted another traffic stop. I'm not sure. But I was traveling east on 150, heading towards Stanford, uh, not very far out of the city limits. And a uh, white Mercedes, I was doing the speed limit of 55 miles an hour, and a white Mercedes passenger car passed me in the fast lane and then abruptly moved over into my lane what I would consider cutting me off um, uh, came very close to the front of my vehicle. Uh, at that point, the vehicle continued on. Uh, I actually, I don't have a radar in my car, so I matched speeds with the uh, vehicle in front of me. My speedometer read 65 miles an hour. I initiated a traffic stop. Uh, Mr. Woods was the operator of the vehicle. I did observe an odor of alcoholic beverages uh, from the vehicle. Uh, I did ask Mr. Woods if he had had anything to drink, and I think he stated three to four beers that they had just left a Mexican restaurant. I'm sorry, did you say that he stated they just left the Mexican restaurant? I think that's what he okay. said, yes. All right, continue. Uh, at that point, I had Mr. Woods step out of the vehicle. Um, I asked him to uh, perform field sobriety.
identity test um, because I can observe the odor of alcohol on his breath even after he exited the vehicle. Uh, Mr. Woods really was not very cooperative at first and actually didn't want to take any test. Uh, at that point, I explained to Mr. Woods that that was the only way I could to, to determine whether or not he was safe to be on the roadway. That that's how I needed to determine whether or not he could continue on uh, operating the vehicle. Um, Mr. Woods did perform the horizontal gaze and nystagmus test for me, where he exhibited all six clues. Uh, at that point, he uh, I asked him to take the. Uh, Your Honor, may we approach? You may. Prosecution relinquish the officer of the citation. He may refer to it only if it. I would suggest you do that. Yes, sir. Thank you, Counsel. Thank you, Your Honor. Deputy, do you have your citation with you? I do. May I have the citation, please? Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, all right, so you had the defendant step out of the vehicle and he performed the HGN test. Is that? We're, is that where we are, we're left off? Yes, at that, at, at that point after the horizontal gaze and the stagnant test, <coughs> I asked Mr. Woods to perform the uh, walk and turn test, and Mr. Woods stated that there was no need, no need to perform those. Okay. Now, I've heard testimony that it may have been cold today, but what was your indication from him making that statement? That he, basically, I felt as though it was, he was like, uh, there's no need to take those, I'm going to fail them, take me to jail. And at that point, he, Mr. Woods was arrested. Uh, Mr. Woods did not seem to be a threat. Uh, I transported him to the uh, detention center where I read implied consent to Mr. Woods and uh, offered to uh, for him to contact an attorney, which he didn't want to do. Then read the rest of the implied consent and the requested that he submit to a breath test, which he said he would not take. And you made a statement that you did not deem him a threat. Is that correct? That he was uncooperative, but didn't he wasn't mean or agitated or anything to that nature. Okay. Now, Mr. Foreman's making a deal about the um, that you didn't handcuff him. Is that? Is that against your all's procedure? We don't have a policy that we have to arrest every suspect. I was just trying to be nice to Mr. Woods. He was, like I said, not a threat. Okay. And so, was there, when you asked him if he would submit to a breath test, did he give any reason why he would not submit to the breath test? I don't believe so. He just said he would not. So when I want to jump back to the horizontal gaze, the stagnus test. Now, when you performed it, I know you stated. So, did you see the twitching, or what, on the first test, the smooth pursuit? What exactly did you see when you performed that? I saw a lack of smooth pursuit in both eyes. Meaning, just to just to clarify, what exactly? And 
on specifically to Mr. Woods? Uh, again, when you're passing your finger in front and they're following, the eyes are jerking as they follow your your finger. And is that what you observed on Mr. Woods? Yes, sir. And then the next test being maximum deviation. Sp relating to Mr. Woods, what did you observe? Nystagmus at maximum deviation in both of Mr. Woods' eyes. And then the last test being the onset prior to 45? Yes, sir. Uh, what did you observe with respect to Mr. Woods? Nystagmus uh, prior to 45 degrees in both eyes. Okay. Now, after you read the implied consent for, for, form, other than, um, as you stated, he refused, was there anything else that he stated at that time? I don't remember him requesting anything at that point. Now, did you explain to him that he would lose his license if he refused? I read the implied consent to Mr. Woods. And, in, and that's part of it? Yes, sir. Okay. Did he appear to understand what you told him? He appeared to, yes. Okay. Did he ask any questions? Not that I recall. Did he ask you to repeat anything you told him? Not that I remember, no. Did he, and again, just, did he say why he would not take the test? I don't believe he had a reason why he would not take the test. Now, did you base your opinion of the defendant's impairment solely on his refusal to take the test? No. What did you base your opinion on? Uh, based upon, of course, obviously, his driving, conditions that occurred that made me initiate the stop, the uh, smell of alcohol on Mr. Woods, alcoholic beverages on Mr. Woods' breath, uh, the fact that he stated that he had had three or four drinks. Um, in my career of 16 years, I've had very few people tell me the truth. I don't know if Mr. Woods was or was not, but most people tell me they have a beer or two and they have had 12. So. I, I can't say. Most people don't tell me the truth on that. Whether Mr. Woods was or not, I have no idea. He stated he had three or four beers. Um, he stated he had been to a Mexican restaurant. Again, I get him out of the vehicle. He exhibits the clue for the horizontal gaze and stagnus, which, based on my 16 years and doing this numerous times, I feel like the horizontal gaze and stagnus is a very, uh, very reliable a field sobriety test uh, due to the fact that it's an involuntary jerking of the eyes. I don't think there's any way you can fake that or keep that from happening. Um, as far as the balancing test, which Mr. Woods would not perform, um, I know his attorney stated it was cold. I'm sure it was in January. I don't remember how cold it was. Um, those are factors that can affect walk and turn, one leg stand. Um, I've also had people who are one instance I had a case, I, I remember a girl was a gymnast. She was well over the legal limit and she passed walk and turn and one leg stand perfectly. She had great balance, but of course she failed the horizontal gaze and savings test. So, and just a real quick question back. Do you have to recertify for your training or do you go through a training every so often for DUI detection? Uh, every two years, we have to recertify on the intoxilizer, which is the actual instrument that um, collects the breath and gives a readout for the breath test. As a law enforcement officer, we have to take 40 hours a year just in law enforcement basics, um, different courses every year that we're a law enforcement officer. So, based on your 16 years experience, your 40 hours of training, um, could you form an opinion as to whether the defendant was under the influence? Yes, I felt Mr. Woods was under the influence. Obviously, that's why he was placed under arrest. Okay. I have no further questions at this time. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Mr. Foreman Cross, when you're ready, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. If I may just have one moment. You may, sir.
Deputy Addison, how are you today? Good, you sir? Doing all right. Um, you have indicated that um, you've been doing this quite a while, 16 years, is that right? I feel like that's a substantial amount of time, yes. I, I would agree. That's, that's a long time to be doing something like this. Um, so you've been uh, trained, you said recertified. You went to Richmond 16 years ago, I presume? Correct. And there you were uh, given, was it, you said, a 22-week course at the time? Yes, sir. I think they've since changed that. I think it's a little bit longer now. but I think it's went longer and then went shorter, and there were yeah. some homeland security issues that we had to go through, and I think that's why the course actually went longer. Right, right. Uh, but when you took it, you, you completed the course, yes, suffice sir. it to say, and you got your law enforcement certification badge done, the whole bill. Um, and in your uh, in your training, do you remember uh, being taught to uh, write your reports and make them as complete and as accurate as possible? That's correct. And they taught you that because uh, in the future a jury may rely on it, right? It's our it's our, basically our field notes and it's our report for what happened on the scene. The jury would rely on it, wouldn't they, at some point? I don't know if the jury relies on it. Uh, As we are here today, we're not relying on the report? I, I don't think they have the report, if that's what you're asking. But they have heard testimony from the report, have they from not? From the report from me, yes, sir. So they're relying on the information coming out of the report? From my report. Correct. That's what I'm talking about. Yes. Uh, a judge would rely on it, wouldn't Wouldn't a judge rely on that as well? I would assume I don't perform judge duty. Mr. Johnson would rely on this report? Yes, I believe he would. I would rely on this report? I guess you would. So you made sure that this report is complete, accurate, and is not missing any information? Uh, yes, we, we do the best we can. There's a, my penmanship is not the greatest, I have to admit. It never has been. Uh, there's a limited amount of space that you can write in the reports. I try, I do the best that I can to get all the information. I try to put the pertinent information to the case in the citation. Sometimes you cannot put everything in there based on the fact that I just don't have enough room to put it in there, but I, I do try to get as much information in there as I possibly can. So you never pick up a second page and supplement it if, if there's not enough room in the citation itself? No, sir, I do not have an MDT which would allow me to do that. I have to do paper citations still, so that makes it very difficult. But and no, so you cannot even supplement it if you have relevant information that must go into that report, you just ran out of room, you're just SOL? If it must go in the report, it goes in the report. Fair enough. Um, so you, I want to dive in, um, oh, I'm sorry, let, let's back up. So when you were in the, in the right-hand lane on highway, which one was it, 150? US 150 bypass. US 150 bypass. It, it has several numbers, I think it's 127, 150. I think it has. I think it's listed as several highways, but yes. You may be right. I think. I think that's the one that I actually took over, and my GPS was. Yeah, gave there, me like there three are several roads. roads. Right. Um, and you saw uh, Mr. Woods pass you, which you later determined was by pacing him at least correct. ten miles over the speed limit. That's correct. <coughs> okay. Uh, and you decided to initiate a traffic stop. Based actually, on that? Actually, I can. Uh, I was going to initiate the traffic stop based on when he passed me and moved over into my lane. At that point, I was already planning on initiating a traffic stop at that point, but then I went ahead and he continued on, so I paced him and paced his vehicle. When he, so when he cut you off, that you made the determination, I'm going to pull that vehicle over? There was going to be a traffic <coughs> stop conducted on that vehicle, yes. And then subsequently you paced him at 65 miles an hour? Correct. In a 55 mile zone? That's correct. And you pulled him over? That's correct. And he pulled over, did, did he continue on for uh, a short while, a long while, or did he pull over right away when he saw your cherries? I don't remember Do you that. Remember? Uh, I'm assuming he pulled over fairly quickly because if he would have continued to drive, I would have listed that in the citation. And did he pull over to the side of the road? He did pull over to the side of the road, yes. And you pulled up behind him? Yes. Okay. 
shortly after that, uh, do you remember approaching Mr. Wood's vehicle? Yes. Was his window rolled down, or did you ask him to roll the window down? I have no idea. You don't remember? I do not remember that. Okay. Um, but you've stated that you've detected the odor of alcohol coming from the vehicle. Yes. Okay. And uh, did you ask him out of the vehicle immediately right then, or did you go back to the car, radio for backup? What was your, what procedure did you follow? Actually, I don't remember. Uh, normally, if I observe an odor of alcoholic beverages, I'll ask the subject to, to exit the vehicle at that point. I don't remember in that case. I know that you said that I walked back and got back into my vehicle. I don't remember doing that. I'm sure that's a possibility that I did that to check his license and run his license, but I don't recall doing that. But normally, if I smell alcoholic beverages, I, I will get the subject out and try to perform field sobriety tests. And that's exactly what you did in this case, correct? You asked him out of the vehicle? Yes. Um, you stated that uh, eventually you got Mr. Woods to perform the HGN, also known as the horizontal gaze and stagnus test. That's correct. And I remember, uh, because I wrote it down, on direct, uh, you've stated, quote, alcohol can cause nystagmus, right? That's correct. And there are other causes of nystagmus as well. I'm not, do you remember I'm being not caught medical, at the academy? I'm not a medical doctor, and I do remember that, and I think there are some other drugs, PCP, Inhalants being one, and I, if I'm not mistaken, a, a brain stem injury or something to that effect could could cause nystagmus. Uh, are you aware that heredity or diet can also create nystagmus? Never heard that. Uh, what about caffeine? Uh, I know that there had been some research done on caffeine, and I think that that was, if, if I'm not mistaken, I, I remember them saying that they didn't believe that that affected nystagmus. What about eye muscle fatigue? Uh, I know if you hold max deviation for longer than 30 seconds, it can cause uh, fatigue of the eye. If you hold the maximum deviation too long, it can cause fatigue of the eye and can cause uh, nystagmus. Eye strain? I've never heard of it. No, I haven't heard that, no. Simply straining of the eye? I mean, yes, but I haven't heard that causes nystagmus. Uh, are you aware that carbon monoxide can cause nystagmus? Uh, what about extreme chilling? I haven't heard that either, sir. So, and you already stated you're not an ophthalmologist. Correct. You're not an eye doctor, I believe you said. You're not an optometrist. No, sir. You were simply trained pursuant to NHTSA, which is, sorry, that's the National Highway Traffic and Safety Administration. That's correct. Okay. Uh, you've also stated you don't recall how cold it was that night. It was January, and I, I remember it being cold, but I can't. I know you said you looked it up on the weather, and it was very cold that day, and that's very possible. I, I, I'm in the weather all the time. I enjoy it. Either. Were you dressed warmly? I usually don't wear a coat because it gets in my way, so I'm sure if it was, uh, there have been occasions I have put it on on a rec scene because you're gonna, you know you're going to be out there for hours. Uh, usually I don't wear a coat. It's very uncomfortable for us also. Makes sense. It restricts your ability to reach if you need to for your own protection. Correct. Right, right. Um, let's go back to the, um, when you asked Mr. Woods out of the vehicle, okay? Um, You've also been taught to look for other indicators of intoxication. Do you remember the pre-exit, the, the post-exit? Field sobriety is just one of them. But you'll, uh, using your common sense, I believe, you know, we're not leaving the common sense at the door, as we've stated. Neither do you. You use your common sense to see, is the subject uh, impaired by uh, alcohol, something else, or if they're just having a medical issue, if there was like a post-accident, let's say, and you can call EMT. Uh, not something that, that happened here, but or EMS rather. Um, but you, you look for, it's like a totality of circumstances kind of investigation. Would you agree? Yes. Okay. Um, and looking over in your report, uh, one of the indicators that are, are most common, for instance, uh, are red bloodshot eyes. That's correct. And you, 
Mr. Woods did not have red bloodshot eyes in this he case. He did have bloodshot glossy eyes, yes, sir. He did. And you never wrote that down in your citation? I believe it is in my citation, yes, sir. It's, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's towards the bottom of the citation. Oh, you are correct, sir. I do apologize. Bloodshot glassy eyes. And it was 1054 at night, correct? That's correct. <clears throat> okay. Um, but he did not have a flushed face, did he? I don't recall him having a flushed Which face. is another indicator of an intoxication. Correct. Um, he did not have slurred speech, did he? I don't recall him having slurred speech, no. So he spoke perfectly fine. He didn't speak a whole great deal, but what little he did speak, yes. He had no trouble getting out of his vehicle? I don't recall him having He wasn't trouble. stumbling or falling over? I don't or recall that, no. He didn't use the vehicle, you know, sometimes they'll use the vehicle to balance themselves if they're about to fall. He didn't do that? No, sir, I would have listed it if he would have. He didn't fall over and hit the pavement as he got out of the vehicle? No, sir. He didn't throw up? No, sir. Uh, You've stated that initially he was a little bit un uncooperative, but later he began to cooperate. No, not really. He, it's hard to explain. He did what I asked him to do, but yet he would not do, he would not perform field sobriety tests. When I asked him for his license and insurance, he gave them to me. When I asked him to step out of the vehicle, he did so. When I asked him to take field sobriety tests, he did not want to take those. At that point, I explained to him that that's the only way I could, you know, you told me you've had three or four drinks. I smell alcohol in your breath. He did have the bloodshot, glossy eyes. At that point, it's my duty to make sure he's safe to be on the roadway for him, <coughs> his passenger, and the public. Um, based on his driving, I didn't think his, his judgment was very good, almost cutting me off. Um, I asked him to step out. I explained to him that's the only way I can determine whether or not you're safe to drive. He then took the HDN, the horizontal radius nystagmus test, but then when I asked to do the other ones, he said, there's no need in it, and would, would not perform those tests for me. And then, of course, at the detention center, he would not uh, submit to a birth test. Was he polite with you? I don't know if I would call it polite. He was... Agitated? No, he wasn't agitated. He was just, matter of fact, I guess this is the best way that I can... Fair enough. He didn't seem threatening, but he just was not cooperative either. Do you remember, I know it's been a long time, um, as a matter of fact, I'm going to ask this question before I ask my next one. Uh, 16 years ago, you did complete the 40 hours, which is standard in Richmond to this day, to complete for the uh, standardized field sobriety and DUI detection training. That's correct. Did you ever recertify at any point? Did you? Because you can recomplete a ride, which is the advanced roadside impairment have, driving uh, education. I have, have had the advanced DUI course. Uh, I don't know when it was. It's been years ago that I have had the advanced DUI training course. Uh, I have uh, completed uh, parts of the 40-hour course again, and maybe the whole course. I'm not sure on the field sobriety test. Do you remember when that was? I'm just trying to get a feel. It's for been it. it's been years. It's okay, been several years. Um, do you remember during the course and, and the, the recourse, uh, you were taught, because I've, I've taken the course myself uh, in Georgia with uh, a DRE certified, he's got all the credentials, he's a DRE, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, Drug re recognition? No, the, he's an instructor, he's instructor certified, you know, you can get, you can get DUI, you can get a DUI instructor certification, you can get DRE, and DRE instructor is pretty much the highest, where you can teach other officers at this point what uh, drug recognition uh, uh, expert is and how to become one, essentially. Yes. You're aware of that? Okay. Yes. Um, so in, in that course, one of the, the points, and in, that's why I was asking while I was gauging the, the timeline here, do you recall uh, learning that alcohol actually does not have a smell? I don't recall that. I, I know I can observe an alcoholic beverage. I can't tell you what alcohol beverage it is, but I, right. I can. I think most of us have smelled an alcoholic beverage before. 
And, and sometimes you can even tell by the smell maybe what it would be or would it not be. I don't know if I no? would make that determination. You wouldn't even be able to make that determination. Okay. Uh, do you remember being taught that uh, the smell actually comes from the flavoring, the aroma that is added to the drink? Do you remember that? No, I don't remember that. Okay. Do you remember having any conversation with Mr. Woods on the way to the jail? I usually talk to everyone. Uh, I don't recall him saying a whole lot, but I can't advise. I, there was no relevance to it, anything that we said that I remember, so that's why it wasn't listed in the report. Normally I'd chat with people on the way to jail just, just because that's what I did. But in this case, you just you don't remember? I, I don't remember. I, and that's if good. I did, I couldn't tell you what we said. And you don't have any recording device? No, sir. Audio, I, video. I've never been issued. Our sheriff's department's small, and I've never been issued any body cams, or I think maybe a couple, a couple of your vehicles that we have have some video dash cam videos, but mine does not. Um, at the jail, you did not perform or ask Mr. Woods to perform any field sobriety tests. No, right? sir. That's not standardly what we do. We normally do it. We make our determination on the scene. And you've, uh, I think I'm, I'm repeating Mr. Johnson here, you've stated uh, in, in one of his questions, uh, Mr. Woods never asked to, for you to repeat the implied consent. Not that I recall. Prior to asking him to submit to the breath test, which he refused. And then uh, you've also stated that it appeared to you that he understood everything. He didn't ask me. As far as I remember, if he would have asked something, I would have listed it in the report. But obviously, he didn't ask anything. Those are all the questions I have, Your Honor. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Johnson, I'll give you a moment and any redirect, if any. Yes, sir. Just real briefly. So, was there ever any mention of any medical conditions that would preclude Mr. Woods from taking any, any of these tests? As far as I can remember, Mr. Woods never said anything about a medical condition. And is it, is it your standard? Would you say, you know what, it's too cold or it's too hot or I'm just going to pick you up and take you to jail and then we'll do the test there? Normally we try not to arrest someone unless there's a reason to arrest them. I, I wouldn't. I, I get that the weather is sometimes it's hot, sometimes it's cold, sometimes it's icy. We do the best we can with what we have. Obviously, you know, you're on the side of a roadway. We try to be as safe about it as we can, but we don't normally typically take people into custody and take them somewhere to perform a test. Uh, we try to take the weather in, into consideration. We're cold, they're cold, we understand that, but that's, you know, unfortunately, if we feel that there's a need to perform these tests, we're going to uh, administer those tests. You stated that, well, you don't recall whether he had a flushed face, but could a flushed face also be due to the cold? I'm sure it could. I, my face has been red and windburned before. Okay. So. Now, if Mr. Woods had submitted to the intoxilizer and um, blown well below the legal limit, what would you do at that point? His, his charge would have been amended, as, as far as I know, to a reckless driving. Okay. Um, I have no further questions. Sir. Uh, just one, Your Honor, if Sir. I may. I apologize. You may. Um, Take your time. You're fine. <laughs> um, during um, your interaction, Mr. Woods, after you placed him in the cruiser, um, do you recall at any point Mr. Woods asking you to take him to the hospital for a blood test? I do not recall. You don't recall? That's all I have, Judge. Uh, Mr. Johnson, do you redirect? No, sir. Uh, Deputy, you may step down, sir. Thank you. 